What's up, world, and welcome back to The Real News Network. I'm Jared Ball here in Baltimore. As the struggle in Greece continues, with much of the media focus being decisions taken by Greek and European political and economic leaders, one question we wanted to pay particular attention to here is the involvement in this crisis of the United States. In other words, what role is taken previously and now by this country, and what is the impact on the Greek economic crisis of the U.S. specifically? To address this question, and joining us now is Mark Weisbrot, who, among other things, is an economist and columnist and co-director of the Center for Economic Policy Research in Washington, D.C. Welcome back to The Real News Network, Mark Weisbrot. Thanks, Jared. Good to be with you. So as I said in the intro, what, from your perspective, uh, is the impact of the United States and its dominated institutions on this crisis in Greece? Well, the U.S. government, the Obama administration, its main concern is really they don't want to see Greece leave the Eurozone. And they're looking at it kind of from an empire point of view, that if Greece leaves the Eurozone, uh, the Eurozone could be weaker, it could disintegrate. The whole process could weaken European unity. In worst-case scenarios, Greece could leave NATO. Greece could end up borrowing from Russia. So these are the way. This is the way it's looking at. And that puts them a little differently from Europe. Europe is a little more divided on. They don't want Greece to leave the eurozone either. They want to get. Their strategy is really to get rid of the current Greek government, the Syriza government, and force them out. And the U.S. is okay with that, but. Uh, they're more worried about them forcing them possibly out of the Eurozone altogether. So one place where this shows up is through the IMF, because the U.S. dominates the IMF. Now, they don't usually use all their muscle at the IMF to uh, go against Europe. They would normally let the Europeans decide what happens in Europe. But in this case, there was a board meeting uh, before the referendum in Greece on July 5th, where the U.S. Uh, got the IMF board against the wishes of Germany, especially, uh, to release a study that the IMF had done uh, showing that Greece's debt was not sustainable and that there had to be debt relief. And that really that really angered the Germans and their allies, because this kind of helped Syriza in the referendum uh, on July 5th, because Syriza, the government, which was pushing for a no vote to reject the last offer that the European authorities had given them, the government was able to cite that study and say, look, uh, we need debt relief. This is an unsustainable debt vote, no. And so that was a real point of friction between the U.S. and Germany. And there's a case where the U.S. used its muscle uh, in the IMF to get that report released uh, before the referendum, and it, and it could have had an influence. Now, the problem is that this doesn't really do Greece or the world any good, because it's nice that they want debt relief. But the IMF is still signed on to a program in Greece that will not allow the economy to recover, and the debt relief isn't going to help that at all. So if I heard you correctly, the United States hasn't had a particular problem with what led to this crisis. Their problem uh, comes with uh, the various forms that uh, a response to this crisis have taken among the Greek people, which is somewhat related to the second question I wanted to ask you uh, uh, about this looking somewhat to some of us like a macrocosmic version of the predatory lending we saw here uh, that, of course, the United States as a whole didn't have a problem with uh, uh, for individuals in the United States. Does that analogy work at all for you? And if not, please tell us why. Well, I don't think it's really analogous to predatory lending because this isn't really about the money. It's not about uh, who, how much Greece is going to pay in, on its debt, which is unsustainable, and uh, in how much the European governments are going to lose. And it's, it's, it's you know, probably 86 percent government-owned debt now, because they've already bailed out the private lenders. 
So uh, it's really about power and using that power on behalf of the European authorities, using that power to change Greece and change Europe into uh, societies that have a smaller social safety net, uh, reduced pensions, health care spending, weaker labor movements, more inequality. More like the United States, actually. Uh, that's the kind of transformation they're trying to make in Europe. And they've been using the debt uh, crisis and associated uh, vulnerabilities of the more vulnerable European countries to force those changes there, not only Greece, but Portugal, Spain, Ireland, Italy, and even in the whole Eurozone as a whole. That is their vision. That's what they are trying to do. But in, well, at least for some of us, that is in some way how we interpreted the predatory lending uh, impact or purpose or function here in the United States to do just what you said is the, the intent uh, among, you know, by the United States for those in Greece, that is to weaken uh, the resistance to, to uh, a, a drawback of, of society safety nets and, and uh, other benefits to working people. But you, you still, you don't see that as, as uh, having the same function here? Well, if you look at the response to the the financial crisis and the Great Recession here, uh, it was very different than in Europe. Now, it's true, if you look at the state level, you did see some of that. You had, you know, cutbacks, uh, teachers and other state employees laid off, and things that were probably also politically uh, motivated. Uh, but uh, at the federal level, you had a stimulus. It wasn't enough of a stimulus. But if you look at, uh, it, they didn't attempt to use the Great Recession as an excuse for imposing nationwide austerity and taking away, we don't have anywhere near as much to take away as Europe, but they didn't cut Medicare or Social Security or do any of the kind of things that you see in Europe. And we didn't have the prolonged recession either that they had in Europe. You know, unemployment in Europe is twice the level of the United States, and that's primarily because of the different uh, response of macroeconomic policy here as compared to Europe. I'm not going to defend it because they could have done much more. We're still down three or four million jobs from where we should be right now. Uh, so they should have done a lot more and it would have been easy to do a lot more. But compared to Europe, it was still very, very different. Mark Weisbrot, thank you again for joining us here at The Real News Network. Thank you. And thank you for joining us as well here at The Real News Network. And for all involved, I'm Jared Ball. And as always, as Fred Hampton used to say to you, we say peace if you're willing to fight for it. So peace, everybody. Catch you in the whirlwind.